In our discussions about social networks, a useful conceptual picture has been emerging of social networks as consisting of tightly knit communities with the bridging links that go between them, right? So in particular, an edge between two people in a social network can either be deeply embedded in one community, right? These two people belong to the same community, they have a lot of common friends, or can have more of a bridging structure. It connects two people who fundamentally are rooted in different communities. And you can think in your own life how some of your connections stay within communities that you travel in a lot, that you're very comfortable with, and other of your connections to people actually go outside and span a lot of social distance. One other insight that began to emerge as people thought about this, and was really a style of analysis pioneered by the sociologist Ron Burt, was that in this configuration, some people have access to many types of bridging links, and other people have access to many fewer. In other words, people often stake out different positions in the territory of the social network, so that some people stand essentially at the boundary of a community, and they link to many other communities, and other people often can sit at the center of a community, and so many of their connections are all within that one community. And so, following Ron Burt's expositional lead in talking about this, let's think about a story involving managers within an organization, say within a company, and the different experiences that two people in this very same organization at the very same job description could have based on their position in the social network. And so the story I want to talk about involves a social network, or at least sort of a schematic cartoon picture of a social network, and I've drawn it here. And you'll notice immediately you see that this organization, or at least the set of managers in this organization, forms three conceptual clusters. Right? There's the one containing A, B, E, and F, and these two other unlabeled nodes. There's the cluster that contains C, and the cluster that contains D. And we see that nodes A and B have staked out these two different types of positions that I was just talking about. Right? So A is at the center of a cluster, right? and all of A's friends come from that, that cluster, all the people that A talks to within the organization. B, who has the same number of connections as A, they both have five, but B is sort of at the border of this cluster and reaches out into other ones. Right? So three of the people B talks to regularly, uh, A, E, and F, are in sort of what's sort of B's home community, and then C and D reach out to other communities. And the point of this style of analysis is that A and B actually have very different sources of relative advantages when they think about how they can operate within this organization. Right? So from A's point of view, the advantage of being deeply embedded in, in this cluster, right, to have these edges that have many mutual friends surrounding them, is that you can often get greater trust in your interactions. Right? So when A interacts with E, or when A interacts with F, or with B, what we see is that all these interactions are effectively chaperoned by many mutual friends that they both have. And so in the event of misbehavior by either of them, there are many people who can kind of observe and disapprove. And that effectively creates an incentive for these kind of interactions to go smoothly, to go well, because they're embedded in this, in this social community with lots of people effectively watching through the mutual friendships. B, on the other hand, has riskier interactions, right? So his interactions with A, E, and F are embedded in that cluster, but the interactions with C and D have a, a very different nature, right? Because there, there effectively is no third party who can witness that BC interaction or that BD interaction. And as a result, right, it's sort of, it's riskier. In the event of misbehavior, there's sort of no comparable opportunity for subsequent social sanctions by anyone. And so there's less incentive for everybody to behave well. Right? So there's sort of less trust placed in those, those kind of interactions. On the other hand, B has this different form of counterbalancing advantage. And in Ron Burt's language, what B is doing is spanning a set of structural holes in the organization. Right, so we can think of a structural hole as this kind of deliberately informal term for the empty space in the social network where links have failed to form. Right, so between C's cluster and D's cluster, for whatever reason, just links have not formed. And so B is kind of the unique broker between those two, those two clusters. And that position of brokerage for B actually gives B a lot of benefits. For one thing, it can be an amplifier for creativity. Right, so the argument is that B is the only person who's exposed to the ideas that originate in C's cluster and in D's cluster. And so if someone is going to have an insight, a new way to combine those ideas, it's going to be B. And similarly, it also gives B a source of power. B is effectively a gatekeeper regulating the flow of information that comes from C's cluster and D's cluster 
into B's own home cluster that contains A, E, and F. And that can make B a particularly valued member of the organization in ways that the other people uh, can't be. So what we see is that there's these counterbalancing contrasts, right, A versus B. A has embedded interactions. It has a lot of trust in these interactions. B has these riskier interactions that can be greater access to information, ways of combining information in novel ways. And empirical studies of or organizations in a number of cases has found that people who play the role of B, who span structural holes, can often have a number of concrete benefits in the organization, right, that their ideas can be taken up more quickly, that they can be promoted and advanced through the organization more quickly. And so by thinking about the social network and the way in which links are divided, right, across clusters and within clusters, we can begin to think about some of the higher level outcomes that arise through the social processes that take place in these structures, in organizations, in companies, in schools, and among groups of friends.